Right here guys, welcome back to another episode. So, in today's episode, in 24 hours from now, we're gonna be halfway up Big Red in the Glasshouse Mountains, flexed up, doing some hectic shit. But Yeah, so for 24 hours from now, I'm gonna be halfway up Big Red, flexed up, doing some hectic shit. But before then, this car's not really Glasshouse ready. So, I've given myself a bit of a challenge. In 12 hours, I wanna remove this bar, design a new bar, build the new bar, paint the new bar, have it on with a winch and a set of sliders as well. Sam doesn't think it's possible. I think I can do it. So come along for this episode and we're gonna get it. Timer starts now. So, I've knocked up this uh, little bull bar cradle here, out of, just uh, templated it out of cardboard. Now I've transferred it over to Fusion. Uh, we've just got the winch cradle there, what's gonna bolt to the chassis there. Probably haven't told you this, but I'm actually building like a tube style bar. So this is just the cradle for the center. And then we're gonna throw a bit of tube on the sides and on the top and some infill plates just to make it look a little bit more finished. So we'll send this over to the plasma and then get into cutting it out. We're already 45 minutes down and uh, we've just started the cradle cutting out process. So once that's done, we'll bolt the bolt up there. I'm gonna get the welder ready while I wait for the plasma to finish. And then we're gonna start welding on our cradle and getting that all sitting how we want. Then we can move on to the tube, tacking on the tubes, tube infills. We'll just tack it all together and then weld out in one big hit. Juicy. It's gonna be so freaking juicy. Now, if my measurements were correct, they weren't. Sick. 110 degrees is where it's sitting happy now. So I'm just gonna measure from there to there, tack this bottom part on, make sure it's nice and straight and everything, and then throw it back on the ute, check that it's center, check that everything's level, and then uh, place a few more tacks on it. Then we can start building the rest of the cradle, tack the whole cradle together, and then, uh, yeah. Time for the tube, pretty pretty easy process. Like you could do all this with a grinder, it'd just take a little bit longer, so don't give yourself 12 hours. Speaking of, how's our timer? We have 10 hours, 38 seconds left. First step, cradle's done. Fucking pissing down rain again. It's sticking out pretty far, but it's good because I'll have space for a front man inch cooler behind it, which is kind of the whole plan. It doesn't really kill my approach angle too much. Time to weld on my infills and top pieces so the cradle can be finished. And we're looking pretty good for time. 10 hours, 28 minutes to go. Rightio, so the cradle is now tacked up. Like it's pretty much done now. I just need to weld, blend, but the long sh So now we're gonna start making some tube that goes around, double tube, tube infills, and then some hoops for it as well, because you can't have a bar without hoops in my opinion. So yeah, let's get cracking onto that, get some tube and get into it. Okay, so this is where we're at so far. So we've got our side hoop on now, middle hoop in, we're all just still tacked in. Time is really running away from us. We're down to five hours, 52 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna pause the clock there and go home because uh, I've got a birthday to go to, so gotta sort that out. I'll be back first thing in the morning and hopefully we can get this done in under five hours. Uh, I think sliders are going out the window because I've burnt through half of my pipe just trying to get these side hoops right. I've been losing my mind. I've done one, two, three, four, five, five side hoops and haven't liked them. So I'm gonna sleep on this one 
and if I don't like them in the morning, then we're doing another one. Rightio, we're back on day two of the bull bar build. Um, today's plan is just gonna be get the bull bar finished, infill panels, and I'm not sure if we're gonna get to sliders because I've burnt through most of my material, but we can still go wheeling in this video, so it'll be bull bar winch and wheeling within 12 hours. So, back with the timer. Five hours, 52 minutes and 24 seconds left. Let's waste no time and get straight into it. All right, so we've had a bit of a fuck up. Uh, we've realized that with all the pushing and pulling and test fitting of the pipes yesterday that actually the cradle ended up coming off square. So I've literally just pulled the whole bar apart. That's why I tacked it together. That way we could modify it if it went wrong. So I pulled the whole bar apart and now we're just gonna, we've centered the cradle again, redo that. I've put a lot more tacks on it so the cradle shouldn't move. And then uh, yeah, then we'll keep going with the top hoops smash out the infills in the bottom, get it painted and finished by this afternoon. We've still got five hours, so we're on track. We should be able to get it done. One, two, three, four, five, six. So do you reckon? Seven. You reckon you'll get it right this time? Mitch has given up on notching. I've taken over now because I think I've got an idea that works better. I've seen this used before on a lot of other fabrication channels. I'm not a fabricator, I don't weld. Not my qualifications, I plaster. So, we've got white marks, we're gonna mirror them to each tube. We're gonna get a piece of paper and tape it on there. We're gonna cut the paper out, pull the paper off, invert it, swap it to the other piece, and then we're gonna have the exact same notch on either side of material. But yeah, we're gonna clean these up and make them smicker. It definitely did work. Watch this, it won't work. So look, we've mirrored the paper, flipped it over, we've got a centre mark. That tab's got to get cut off anyway on that piece, so that doesn't matter. All we've got to do is cut this little piece so it tucks into the bar, and we're good to go. Hold it. What are we putting a carton of beer on there? Three hours, 38 minutes to go. Three hours, 37 minutes to go. And I've still got to tack, weld out, blend off. Then we're done. It's actually pretty close. We're not too far off now. This is actually a lot harder than I thought. It was a big challenge. But uh, I'm gonna tack it all up now so it doesn't move and warp. And then uh, take her off and weld it out. All right, bull bar's off and it's fully welded out and blended now. So uh, we're just going, we've got an hour 30 left on the clock. I'm gonna call it for the day because I've got another birthday dinner to go to. So we're gonna do that for today. Tomorrow, I'll be back to paint, fit winch and done. Hour and a half to spare to do that. I think that's possible. So um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. The next day. We have an hour and a half left, as you seen in that last clip. So the reason it's been so like staggered is because I did that over a weekend, so I didn't really have much time. Like I only had a few hours in the day to actually do some stuff, just little stints. And uh, what you'd last seen was the bar blended off and ready to go for paint. So what we're going to do is, um, oh, and I just tried to, I tried to touch it up off camera for like two seconds. And uh, bad karma, it blew the fibre disc to pieces and shredded my finger like cheese. So. That just told me that I should be recording. <clears throat> so now we're just going to prime it. Then we're going to throw it in uh, some spray putty. So I'm unsure if this is like frowned upon in the painting world. I don't know, but it seems like this stuff will feel like 
maybe little pinholes or like tiny imperfections that we have so you can prime, put this on, sand this back and that'll fill any like tiny imperfections you have. Then we can do the top coat of satin black. Um, we're well over time. We've ran out of time about an hour ago. Sam doesn't think it's possible. I think I can do it. So I was painting this bar and I was painting with acrylic primer and acrylic paint. It's now reacted, I'm not sure why. So if you look closer, you can see like a bunch of cracks and stuff. Now I'm not sure why I thought I did every little step right, but um, I think what I did wrong was I rushed it too much and the paint ended up reacting with the primer because it wasn't fully dry and it's given us that end. So the reason I obviously didn't get it powder coated is because I wanted to stick to the 12 hour challenge. But now that's out the window, I'm gonna have to get this powder coated down the track. But for now, we're just gonna let that paint dry, throw the winch in, throw it on the car. Yes, we didn't do it in 12 hours. Is it possible? Yeah, it probably would be possible, but we had a lot of setbacks as you guys seen. It's one of them jobs, you know, those jobs you go into, think it's gonna take five minutes, it takes three days. These things happen. But we're gonna throw this bar on once it gets dry, hook the winch up, and show you guys the final result. Sweet, we've gone ahead throwing the winch in. I gave it a few more coats of paint and it actually did come up all right. Still will be getting it powder coated anyway. Wasn't super happy with the finish, but uh, we've gone and thrown our winch in. I just found that fair lead I've had for ages. And then this one's actually a, a mongrel built not board edition winch that Sam had sitting out the back and said I could have. So we're gonna throw it on now and then we've just gotta do a bit of guard trimming and a bit of painting behind there. That way uh, nothing stands out too bad. Radio, we're back. I do apologize for the choppiness of this video. It was filmed over the course of a fair few days because I still got a full-time job and a couple little side hustles I got to attend to. Anyways, we're gonna finish off the bar build today by hooking up the winch, polishing up a couple little things, then we're done. I really don't have much to do today, probably only an hour, hour and a half-ish. So I'm gonna show you guys how to hook up a winch. And I ran out of shirts today. Ran out of work shirts and I made my way up to the merch shed and I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, I don't know if it's on the website or not. I don't check that. But check out the new shirt. Design on the back, simple on the front. This is, this is nice. I would wear this. So with the new bull bar and winch, it's absolutely sacked the front of my ute. She's sniffing hard now. I'm currently running 250, 300 weight coils in here in my coilovers and I'm gonna have to change up a fair few coil weights. Spoke to a few SAS D-Max boys and they're talking about running like 450, 350s, 100 kilo spring spread. That way you get softer over small bumps and then it stiffens up on harder bumps. Or you can just do like more traditional and run 400, 350s or 450, 400s. I don't know, it's one of them things you really have to experiment with. And at $800 a set of coils, it's not a cheap experiment, but that's what we get being SAS boys. We lost the IFS problems and now we've gained solid axle problems, but that's all right. Anyways, enough of that. Took a winch up. So there's a bit of Frankenstein stuff going on. I've got a mongrel winch in here. I'm running a different brand winch controller because that's all we had laying around in the shed and Sam didn't have a mongrel controller. So I'm just on Google now. You can literally just search up wiring diagrams on Google for winches and it all makes sense. Now it's just working out colors. We've got long black lead from earth on the front of the winch, I'm pretty sure. Then it also attaches this small one for the earth for the winch controller. And then you run your big power lead to your power on your battery. Then the other three to the other three points on your winch. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The only problem I'm gonna run into here is actually where to mount this because my cradle is so tight to the car and everything just fits really nicely. I didn't actually accommodate for a winch controller. So we're gonna figure out where to put that now and put it up somewhere high and easily accessible. Just in case the Bluetooth remote does mess up, we're still gonna be able to access this for our manual controller. All right, 
So this is where the math starts mathing. So I've got three colored wires down here. I've got a blue, a yellow, and a white. Up on that winch, we've got a red, a black, and a yellow. So I'm just gonna go out on a whim. So yellow goes for yellow. Black and white is usually, they go together, they're usually in earth. And then the blue, let's just say that's power and put it on red. Look, this stuff I probably should have done before the winch was mounted. It would have been a hundred times easier, but what's the point of making things easy when you can just make them more difficult? A few moments later. Okay, so Sparky Mitch was wrong. And it looks like white actually goes to red, which to me doesn't make sense. Everything I've worked with in trucks and stuff is always like black and white's always earth. But I don't know, that's just the way it is. So white goes to red, blue goes to black, and yellow goes to yellow. Now I haven't really ran these wires properly yet because I was just testing things out. I uh, hold that on there. In is in, out is out, so that's all right. We haven't put it in backwards or anything and it all seems to work fine. So we're going to tidy up all the wiring now and then zip tie it all up out of the way. And you should always run a winch isolator as well. That way there's no way it could possibly arc out because there's a lot of power draw going through those and if they arc out, <coughs> no good. Rightio, so last thing we would have all seen is I've thrown the winch in and I've got it working. Now, we're not really done with the winch just yet. So, what you've got to do when you put a brand new winch in is make sure you tension your winch before you actually use it. Especially with these synthetic rope winches. If you don't tension it before you use it, when you apply tension on it, when you go to use it and you really need it, the rope can get sucked down and pulled between other ropes. So what we're going to do is just free spool it all the way out to a forklift I've got sitting up there, throw on the brake and we're just going to tow the forklift the whole way back, slowly feeding the rope on so it all feeds on nice. And then the winch will be ready to go. Whoa, clear out the room, I'm coming through. They want to see what I'm about. Yeah, I got skills, do it for the thrill. I'm on a paper route. Extra, extra read about it. I'm today's trying to tap it. Look, wouldn't have done that. Right, we've got about seven wraps there. Now we're going to go hook it up to our forklift and start pulling our forklift back. And if you don't think the forklift was enough tension, I beg to differ. We uh, dragged it pretty much the whole way through the dirt, so that's nice and tension now. Rightio, so was a challenge possible full bar and sliders in 12 hours? Absolutely not. It could have been if I threw it together, but I wanted to make things look a little bit nicer and I had a few mess ups on the way. But we did get the bull bar done, we got a winch in and we got the winch tensioned. So make sure you like and subscribe. And in two weeks from now, from the date this video drops, we're gonna be going to Glasshouse Mountains and actually testing this out properly for the first time. See you on the next one.